This next demonstration has application in a unit on acids and bases, but it also has application in environmental chemistry. In the Midwest, much of the geology is related to limestone. And what we're going to do is simulate what happens when acid rain falls on limestone, or more importantly, on water, which has a limestone base. Now, what I have done here is prepared a tube that has limestone, which is calcium carbonate, and what I've used are marble chips. Now, this is a plastic tube. There is a little bit of glass wool in the bottom to separate the chips from a two-hole rubber stopper. Now, in my beaker right here, I have simulated acid rain. And to prepare that simulated acid rain, I have taken distilled water, added universal indicator, and then added some dilute and ex exactly uh, 0.1 m nitric acid until I could get a pH of approximately 3 to 4. And that's where I get this red-orange color. Now, what I'm going to do is pour the acid rain through our column of marble chips. We're going to observe what happens as it percolates through the column. And then we're going to look at the resulting water that comes through. Now, when I do this with my students, because it takes a few seconds to go through, I usually play some accompanying music. And the one that comes to mind for me is Peter Gabriel's Red Rain. But I think that music can add a lot to a demonstration in this particular case because it does take some time to pour this through. You can enhance the demonstration. Now what we want to do is observe our lake water which is now green, compared to our acid rain, which is this orange color. Now, what's happened here? Well, most importantly, the marble chips have neutralized the acid rain. That's why we're moving on our Roy G. Biv color scale for universal indicator towards the green. Now, what I'm going to do is go to the board and point out that first reaction that has occurred. And this hydrogen ion would represent the acid rain. Calcium carbonate is our limestone column. And when these react, we produce bicarbonate ion and calcium ion. But there's an important other reaction that is occurring here, and that is that this bicarbonate ion sets up a buffer system. So it's not sufficient just that the lake water now has resisted the acid rain initially, but what happens if you continue to add more acid rain to the lake. So I'm going to take some of the acid rain out of our initial beaker of acid rain, and I'm going to drop it directly into the lime water. And we're going to see how this lake water, rather, is going to be able to resist a change in pH. In other words, what we have here in our lake water is a buffer. Even though I'm continuing to add acid rain, the change is, is non-existent. It's essentially staying that green color. By the way, this buffer system that has set up with the bicarbonate ion is also similar to a buffer system that's in our body with bicarbonate ion. So who's lucky enough to have this happen? Well, in the Midwest, the rock bed has been mainly limestone or limestone in the surrounding areas to water in lakes and streams, to such an extent that environmentalists have actually proposed that you take and add limestone to your lakes and streams that do not have this. Now, I'm going to go back to the board here and focus on that second equation because this is what happens with the buffer. The bicarbonate ion in the lake water reacts with that additional acid rain to form carbonic acid. Now, a buffer is a solution that resists change in pH, and that is whether you're adding more acid or more base. In this particular case, I'm just focusing on what happens when you add additional acid, because that, of course, is the issue with acid rain. So like I said, it's a good example to use with your environmental chemistry topic, if you so desire. 
but I have used it with acids and bases, and my students have found this a good example to focus on something in the environment related to acids and bases.